taking the Charger up to our friends at Swag Off-Road and Performance to finally get the alignment done. I've been getting by with my home alignment, just doing it by eye and using the old tape string trick, but she pulls real hard to the right when you get on it and when you let off the wheel. And quite frankly, I'm getting real sick and tired of wrestling the steering wheel, being that we are manual steering. So, with recommendation from our friend Jim Hannon, we're taking her up to Cotton Town to visit Swag Performance, who really know their way around classic Mopars, and we're just gonna get it done right. It's one of those things you just kinda have to bite the bullet. Now, a lot of people in the comments section have asked, how can you really comfortably drive a 10 second 69 Charger just around town, or even on a longer cruise? Now, the problem is that even with a 30 inch tall tire and a 410 rear gear, you're still spooling up the RPMs as you're driving around. So the trick when it came to really enjoying the Charger was the installment of our gear vendor overdrive. Here we are without the overdrive, and there it is with the overdrive on. That gear splitter absolutely makes this car so much more enjoyable. We're in what you would call second gear overdrive. Now, if I take it out, now I'm at 3,500 RPM at 50 miles per hour. Here's third gear. All right, third gear came on a little hard, but now we're at 2,500 RPM going the same speed. But if I hit the gear vendor overdrive, we're set in manual mode. We're now at 2,300 RPM. Now we're just cruising. And that just makes this car all the more enjoyable, whether you're cruising around, taking the kids for ice cream, or when you're ready, going to the drag strip and laying down a hot time. So the gear vendor overdrive has absolutely revolutionized this car and still has that old school feel. You're still banging through the gears on a torque flight, but with the gear vendor, I can enjoy it anywhere. So that has been one of the absolute best installments on this car. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick minute to let you know that we've got the Mopar Connection Store up and running where you can find all sorts of t-shirts and hoodies in a ton of colors and different sizes. We've even got designs for some of our project cars like Zombie and the Brazen Charger. So make sure to check out the link in the video description below. Robert just let us know that the charger is completely out of whack and he also alerted us that because the computer doesn't go far enough back to 1969 we are currently aligning a 1981 Dodge Diplomat but thankfully he's got his service manual here that's what happens when you find a guy who speaks Mopar he's got the right manual so what's the plan Robert we're gonna see what this one looks like Let's take a ride okay See if it's uh, doable. If not, we may have to take another stab at it. Okay. But, uh, a nice little ride down the road. And we 10 4? Can, we can see. All right. Well, you know your alignment's right when you can steer with just a couple fingers. And that's something I couldn't do just an hour ago so okay so we just did our first test ride it's doing pretty good but we're still pulling a little bit to the right and robert's going to explain why well a vehicle will pull to the least amount of caster and so we've got more negative caster on the left but it's still going to the right so there's not enough split between these 
they need to be a, a positive reading anyway but I maxed out on the availability of the cams adjusters on the upper control arms so we need ability to move just the caster and leave the camber alone so I'm suggesting some some adjustable lower strut rods which will will give us the caster we need and let's leave this camber alone okay so the way it's set up now we've got positive camber on the left side and a tad bit of negative on the on the right so it should be going to the left yeah but the car is uh, consistently pulling. got a little drift to the right okay so so we need to come back to you with some adjustable strut rods yeah and then i can really really dial this in a lot better okay because i think i can move just the caster and leave the camber alone great with those okay well we got our marching orders thank you robert appreciate welcome, it sir. so as robert explained our alignment's just a little bit off and the way that we're going to amend that is by using a new set of adjustable strut rods just to get that unibody squared up again it's a 54 year old car so there's going to be a little bit of weakness and a little bit of compensation needed to get it to square up so the plan is to reach out to one of our friends and supporters of the magazine and see if we can't get a set of adjustable strut rods and bring it back to Robert, put it back on the table and get this car running laser straight. Okay, we got the charger up in the air. We got Jim helping out. We're taking the original strut rods out. We've got our new QA1 strut rods. We'll show you how far superior they are when we get these out. We're gonna do a little side-by-side -side comparison. After we get these guys in, we're going back over to Swag Performance to get this realigned and really get it perfect. So we're gonna show you a little bit of the process when it comes to taking these out and putting the new QA1s in. All right, we've got our first strut rod. This is a replacement. I think I got this from PST maybe 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. It's a really nice piece. It's really, I mean, to be honest, it's a really nice piece. I mean, it's really stout polished looks really good very happy with it even the bushings still look good but they don't offer the adjustability that the qa1s offer and we're gonna unbox these guys right here on camera let me try to do this one-handed all right instructions don't need those okay. those are the invoice <laughs> stickers always like stickers and oh here we go there we go. The big difference is you're not looking at rubber bushings. You're looking at a nice solid piece that is going to take a lot of the slop out and offer the adjustability that's going to give us our positive caster. So that is really what we're looking for with these guys. So we're going to take an exacto knife. We're going to cut this open. We're going to show you guys how to install these and a really quick, easy way to do it. Exactly. And Jim. <laughs> Exactly. Jim's exact knife. Okay, well, never mind. All right, well, we're going to get these nice anodized pieces in. We're going to show you guys the easiest steps. To be honest, Jim just saved us about 20 minutes of beating on our torsion bars. And I don't know what to tell you, man. It's, there's a super easy way to do it. So let's get cracking on this and we'll show you guys how. So the process, believe it or not, is surprisingly simple. And I have the, I actually have the Mancini tool for pulling the torsion bars out. And that was what I was gonna do, was pull the torsion bars out. But the reality is, is that the factory style strut rods, if you're not planning on cutting them out, which I know other YouTube channels and other videos would have you do, and you know, you're just gonna cut those out, well, we don't want to cut those out. We're going to use these in something else eventually. So instead, what we do is that we we go up here to the front, we back off the nut, we go to the back, we back off the nut there, then we take the clip out of the torsion bar, then we we loosen the nut, excuse me, that holds on the control arm. We take a pry bar right there, and we just wedge it back. Now we have a sway bar so we had to take the sway bar loose right here and that allowed us to move 
probably about an inch, about an inch back. And that allowed, it, allowed us to pull the strut rod out. That allowed us all the room we needed to put the new strut bar in. And everything slid forward. And best of all is that you don't lose the position of your torsion bar. And that means you don't have to key it back in. You just, I, in fact, I just tapped it back in from the backside and it pushed everything forward. So we're gonna show you each step of this and it only takes a few minutes really once you've gotten the hang of it. So we're gonna start by taking the, taking the nut off the front of the strut, taking the rear nut off, backing this off and then taking the nut off of the control arm and we'll show you with a pry bar just how to pop it back about an inch and bam you're in all right well we got our qa1 strut rods in took us what about an hour something like that one day yeah yeah it went together pretty quickly um and of course jim had to educate me on his way of doing it which Saved us a bunch of time. You know, 40 years of this stuff, right? <laughs> you learn how to, a fast way to do it. You pick up on a few things. Yeah. We're all set up. We're going to hit up Robert, and we'll see if we can't get back there tomorrow morning and uh, get this guy running right. QA1's on there. Tried to clean it up a little bit. Thankfully, there's no drips. No baked on oil, so that's good. Should make for an easy adjustment. I'm adjusting the caster only. It's doing it independently of the camber. And uh, we're basically shortening this bar right here when I twist it. And it's pulling this lower control arm forward, which is bringing the lower ball joint forward and gives you positive caster. Okay. So there are two ways we could do that. We can either move the cams on the up control arm, which we're already maxed out on those. We've got the camera right where we want it. And now we're moving caster uh, independently. So So that the adjustability of that strut rod. Yeah is basically the silver bullet for what we needed yeah. to get this car to run straight. Correct. Wow. We can, we can tune it just about wherever we want it now. No kidding. Yeah, even if we drive down the road and it's got a little drift, according to which side it's drifting, we can maybe even bring it in and tweak it a little bit and, and make it go the other way. No kidding. Make it, make it go center. Okay. So. Well, that's great. I think that's a, uh, Way better improvement over stock. Yeah, than... and I'm doing it with my hands too, which is even. <laughs> well, that's just because it's a brand new machine piece. <laughs> it's not old junk. <laughs> it's yeah. all worn out. Well, I guess it's a good thing they knurled that that shaft. You yeah. get a good grip on it. Yeah, caster. We're just we're adjusting the uh, the angle, the geometric angle of the upper and lower ball joints. We're not going to be moving camber or toe. Yeah, that doesn't affect any sort of tread pattern or no. any tread wear. No, it's a stability angle, so it, it won't affect tire wear at all. And uh, that's the beautiful thing about caster. Uh, I was taught that to imagine the wheels on a shopping cart, and that that's that's caster right there. Right. When you push it forward, it, it goes forward. So. Okay. That's what we're moving. All right. Pretty wobbly. Yeah. Well, that wraps up our alignment here at Swag Performance and Off-Road. 
Really got to thank Robert for walking us through uh, and getting us totally dialed. We got the steering wheel straightened up with the tie rods and we got our adjustable strut rods from QA1. That was a massive difference. QA1 makes a really nice bill of thing. Hell, we adjusted it by hand. I mean, that came out really nice. The car runs straight. We can make hard passes and it won't yank to the right like it used to. And the steering wheel straight, which is, a, that's new for me. So, <laughs> so we're gonna put the links for the QA1 strut rods and for the contact information for Swag Performance and Off-Road. Awesome shop to work with, great guys. They obviously work on classic Mopar and all sorts of other really cool things you can see around here in the shop. So guys, thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe leave a comment and share it with your friends. They'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please visit us over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.